What up, gang? Wayne Carroll, Jack Pot Time coming at you on Wednesday evening. It's about six o'clock. I hope everyone had a good and productive hump day. And you are heading towards the weekend now. And we have got a great slate of games this coming Saturday. Great ones from start to finish, several ranked on ranked matchups. I'm looking forward to it, and I want to kind of look at two uh, matchups that are pivotal here in our state. Uh, one of them may decide a conference championship. That being the noon game uh, between Clemson and Florida State in Death Valley. Right now, Florida State is a two-point favorite as a uh, road uh team against uh, the homestanding Clemson Tigers. Been a long time since Clemson was an underdog at home. Um, that it game opened as Florida State laying one and it's now moved to about two, two and a half. Um, this uh, game, is it going to decide the ACC? I don't know. Uh, you've got several teams in the ACC right now that are still undefeated. Um, Miami may have something to say about it. North Carolina may have something to say about it. Generally, those teams end up cycling themselves out by the, uh, by the end of the year. So, you know, with the no divisions in ACC anymore, this is a pivotal matchup. Probably the matchup of the season as it was uh, advertised to be all summer long. I have um, a hard time uh, thinking that Florida State is going to be able to run the ball on Clemson. That's where the strength of their defense lies. Clemson always has a good defense. No different this year. Um, I think that Florida State will be able to stretch the field on Clemson vertically. They got some good weapons on the outside, and I'm not sure that Clemson matches up all that well with them. Quarterback Jordan Travis, the health of him is going to be pivotal in this matchup. He's got one out against Boston College um, and then got returned later on in the game. So hopefully he's okay. He's ready to go in this game because I want to tell you what, and this, I am, I'm actually picking Florida State in this game. This is going to, they're ranked, Clemson, they're ranked fourth, I believe. Clemson's not even ranked. So it should be a no-brainer, right? Not so fast. Clemson's lost two games in Death Valley since 2016. They lost to Pitt uh, in 2016. And then last year, they lost to my Gamecocks 31-30, in case anyone didn't see it at the end of the season. That's uh, very, very impressive. Uh, they're, I don't know of anyone that can say that outside of you know, possibly Alabama, and then they've already had a snafu at home this year. Does Florida State finally, did they get over the hump? This is their game. So Texas got over the hump for the moment anyway. They went on the road and they won at Alabama. They, they, they had gotten so far, it was time to finally get over the hump and do something really impressive, and they did that. They went on the road and beat Alabama. Now, is it time for Florida State to get over the hump? Now, they've been hyped up for the better part of the past year um, after a nine and three regular season last year uh, with transfer portal additions and the recruiting that Mike Norvell has done there and a lot has been expected of them and to their credit in game one against LSU they lived up to that billing and just the eye test against LSU that's why I'm taking them in this ball game they were more intense and more focused than any team that I can remember seeing in quite some time. It was almost, they were almost scary good. And I couldn't even believe that it was the same team that I've been watching for the past five years. I, I, I just haven't seen that from Clemson. Um, and I, I, I hope that I'm not wrong, but I really have that hunch that Florida State is going to get the job done on Saturday afternoon. And I have, I have a hunch they're going to get it done, and in the second half it's not really going to be close. But part of me is still a little bit scared that this could end up being one of those little old Clemson type games. And by little old Clemson game, I mean Dabo's going to talk you up about how disrespected we are and blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that, and they'll go out there 
and they'll use that home crowd to their advantage, this early start, uh, and they're going to get the win. I, I don't think that's going to happen, though. I'm about, I'm about 80% confident in, in what I originally stated that I think Florida State's going to win that game. They're going to cover, and it's going to be comfortable at the end. This is kind of this is kind of old school versus new school. Okay? The, the transfer portal, uh, NIL, uh, embracing everything that is new, uh, rogue, and exciting about college football versus the old tried and true, stick in the mud, fuddy duddy approach to building a team. Uh, from the uh, outside in or from the inside out, whatever, you know, building it with high school talent, nothing else, not going out and uh, branching out, trying to land any transfers to help you in any weak spots, not acknowledging your weaknesses, and then getting exposed for them. I, I kind of think that they may get exposed a little bit on Saturday, and this, this may be the uh, calling card uh, for that athletic director there to, well, it's time to, hey, Dabo, we need to have a conversation about this. You know, where are we on the transfer portal? Where are we on NIL? I think it's valid. I think Florida State beats them on Saturday. I think you see Clemson's reign. We've already seen a lot of cracks in it. I think you see it starting to topple a little bit. And, and I think you see Florida State really, really make that next level up. At least that's what I hope I see. And, and I'm not saying that because I don't like Clemson. Everyone knows I don't like Clemson. I don't make any bones about that. I, and I'm being objective with this. I just see Florida State winning this game. Yes, I know they played like shit against Boston College last week. I, I understand that. It was a look-ahead spot, and everyone has those games. Everybody has those games. Tennessee had one of those kind of games last year against South Carolina. When Tennessee was really, really good. They went out the next week and won 56 to nothing. Then they went out and won the Orange Bowl. It it just happens. So I don't put a whole lot of stock in those things. I learned a long time ago, you're not as good as you looked last week. You're also not as bad as you looked last week. And I'm sure you've heard me use that saying before. And sometimes when we're betting and when we're trying to figure lines out on games and, and things are really tough, we forget that. We forget that. Yeah, you know, even, even though it's always there, that logic is always there. So I'm taking Florida State in that matchup to cover and win. South Carolina at home against Mississippi State. Right now, South Carolina is a six and a half point favorite against Mississippi State. And uh, the game opened around three, three and a half. Mississippi State scares me running the ball. They have a running back, Jaquavius Marks, and I talked to you about this in the off season or really right before the season started when I did my Gamecock uh, game by game preview uh, this guy is a hammer and he right now is leading the SEC in yards per carry I believe he's leading the SEC in overall rushing yardage you know, shock it's not uh, Quinchon Junkins it's not anybody else it's Jaquavius Marks from Mississippi State South Carolina has had a hell of a time stopping the run the past, I, I don't know how many, it's, it's gotten so many years that I, I can't even count them on one hand anymore. The last time I remember us having a good rush defense. You better come with your head on a swivel on Saturday night. Um, now, to that point, I expect South Carolina to load the box against him a lot to stop that. Because Will Rogers has not been the quarterback that he was in the Mike Leach system. Uh, he's looked uncomfortable this year. The other night he was 11, or the, it's LSU. And no slide on LSU because he was 11 or 28 against them. Yes, LSU has a good defense. You, you, you shouldn't be going 11 or 28, though. You just should not be going 11 or 28, especially someone who's uh, played as much football as Will Rogers has. I understand having a bad game every now and then, but conference game at home, I, you, you, he's better than that. But he hadn't looked comfortable in that office. I don't, I don't understand why coaches change things up. I don't understand why uh, 
certain things are done certain ways. You know, it may, it may have to do with the coordinator. Uh, there may be some other factors. But when Zach Arnett took over as head coach there, and Zach Arnett wasn't planning on becoming a head coach. I, mean, I don't even know the guy wanted to be a head coach. He was kind of, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful here or, or, or anything like that, but he kind of became a, a head coach through no fault of his own. And, I mean, I don't know that he has the, the acumen to be one. And I'm not saying they're a bad team, and I'm not saying that South Carolina can curb stomp them because their coach doesn't know what he's doing. But I just don't understand why – I don't understand why you would change that offense up from what it was. It seems like you know, if Mike Leach didn't have success there, if he had terrible teams year in, year out, and he had gotten fired – then they brought in a new coach. Then I can understand changing the offense, change the offensive philosophy, get something fresh in there. Something else may work better. But I mean, the guy just passed away suddenly, and then we change the offense up to something that no one really knows what we're doing, and they're they're they don't look good. And I I think South Carolina takes advantage of that. Um, I think they try to make Will Rogers beat them. I think they line up. Uh, to stop Jarquavius Marks. They put some men in the box on him. And I think the Gamecocks get this win. Their pass defense is uh, suspect. Back into that D, not good at all. Uh, you saw that. Joan Daniels of uh, LSU with 30 of 34. Uh, so, uh, obviously not a whole lot of pass rush either. Uh, either that or Joan Daniels and his receivers is really freaking good. But 30 of 34, Malik Neighbors for LSU finally did show out big time in that game. It took him a few games to kind of bust out, um, but he had a monster game against Mississippi State. And yeah, a lot of teams, when, when they get beat down like that, they'll kind of get in wounded animal mode and be backed into a corner and they'll come out swinging. Uh, I'm thinking that Mississippi State may kind of fold up like an old cheap card table. And, and kind of phone it in for the rest of the season. But if they don't, and South Carolina can't stop that running back, then we're probably going to have some issues. Uh, so I, I like South Carolina. I like them to cover. I like this to be about a 10-point, two-touchdown win. Uh, it's, it's prime time. It's a uh, on, well, it's on SEC Network. I mean, we're not on ESPN, but... It's a it's in the ESPN family. We're in the SEC Network game of the week, the primetime game. Place is going to be sold out. Place is going to be rocking. Please don't let this don't let this turn into like a uh, a twenty what was it twenty seventeen Kentucky situation. You know when we had tons and tons of recruits on hand. You're uh, at home. You're sold out. And it's a terrible team, and then you lay a big turd. That's that's what I fear. Uh, I always have that fear in the back of my mind when up the Gamecock. So you, you never, you can never really put all your eggs in that Gamecock basket because uh, one of them's liable to fall out and bust on the ground, and then you have one less egg. I think that we get this win Saturday night. Uh, you know, there's going to be no Juice Wells. Uh, Juice won't be back until maybe the Tennessee game. Uh, from what Shane Beamer says, if things go well. Uh, with uh, his his foot, uh, we're told during the broadcast the other day. That, that's the first time we've heard about this. That he had a screw put in his foot because he had broken a bone. That we well, broke a bone in the game, uh, but he had had surgery on this foot. We didn't know that. And uh, he saw a specialist in Charlotte on Tuesday, and they just told him to rest the foot, get off of it. So that's what he's doing, and. I hope he's ready for Tennessee because we're really going to need him up there to uh, stretch the field against them. Not that we don't need him against Mississippi State, but uh, going on the road against Tennessee, I would rather have him in that situation than I would in this one if I had to choose between the two. So we need Juice to get healthy. Give him like a, a healthy eight games, and he can still put up some monster numbers. Um, I'd like to see Nick Harbour get out there some this week. Apparently, he's good to go. Hopefully, a Marion Brown will be back uh, because Xavier Leggett has been carrying a load uh, as, at the wide receiver position this year. 
Uh, Moore, he, he's responded very well also. He's been called on to be the bell cow, if you will, of the South Carolina wide receiver core, and he's done an excellent job. He is probably, from year to year, is probably the most improved player that I've seen in quite some time. So, shout out to him. Uh, offensive line, uh, people keep talking about, oh, South Carolina's offensive line not any good, or it's not that. South Carolina's offensive line didn't do anything to be ashamed of on Saturday afternoon. Um, that, you know, got us out to that lead. They protected Spencer Rattler. Uh, the second half uh, was not as good as the first half, but when you're playing probably the best defensive line in the country, if not one of, you're going to wear down like that, especially when your depth is thin. So we've got, I think, three maybe four offensive linemen right now who are done for the season. We don't know about Jalen Nichols. I'm not sure about that situation, but the offensive linemen, uh, the, the health of the offensive line at South Carolina is poor at best. So for what they've got and what they're working with, those guys are still holding it together pretty good. Oluwatosin Tree Babalade was named the SEC True Freshman Player of the Week. For his performance on the offensive line against Georgia, I didn't even know there was such a thing as an SEC true freshman player of the week. I thought there was just a player of the week, and that's it. But apparently we've got all these other awards now. But, hell, I'm glad he won it. it means he's doing something right. And they're playing freshman on the offensive line like I begged and begged and begged them to do a long time ago. Hell, if they got some talent, play them. I don't care how young they are. Doesn't take out long to learn a playbook. Take it home and study it. Anyway, this video has gotten really long, so I'm taking Gamecocks to win and cover, and I'm taking Florida State to win and cover. If everything goes the way that I've got it laid out, it'll be a great weekend for both of the good guys. I'll see you all later. Appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out of here, and uh, go Gamecocks. Ah, ah, ah. Woo! And go Coach Beamer. Woo! And go Spencer Rattler.